Right, welcome back, guys. Um, this is a, a another, well, kind of unboxing video, but we're not going to unbox it. So, Algo Laser sent me their 10 watt uh, DIY kit mini. Now, if you remember, a while back they sent me the DIY kit, which is um, a, a lot, a lot bigger than this. It's 400 mil by 400 mil, so it's like it's a lot bigger. Uh, but that only has the five watt motor, uh, five watt laser, whereas this one is the 10 watt laser. And I'll tell you what, there's a massive difference. These boxes, we're going to get into laser in a minute, but these boxes that I made after I'd set this machine up literally took one pass and the cut is absolutely perfect. Literally one pass. We're going to do that in a minute anyway, and I'll, I'll prove it to you. Um, okay, so let's get into this laser. So if you want to watch the actual assembly of this, I didn't, I didn't record it. The simple fact that I've got the other video up, which is identical really. The only difference in this machine and the uh, the 400 mil DIY is obviously this is 300 mil by 315 mil. Um, it's got the 10 watt laser with the air assist. Although I don't have the pump, I've got a fish tank pump on it at the moment, but it's working perfectly fine. Um, the power box, this control unit. The cables are all the same, but the difference between this one and the DIY is you've got a key on the other one that you can take, you can lock the machine so no one can use it unless you put the key in. Um, and it's got an emergency stop button. I'm not sure why they didn't do that with this. Maybe they've got their reasons, but I would, I would have liked to have seen that stop button um, and that key. I mean, the key's good because if you've got young children that may be, or teenagers that may get into your workshop or, or, or try messing around with, with your laser, you know, it can be really dangerous. And also, sometimes when you're cutting wood, um, you can set it on fire. And that's happened a few times with me. Um, and it's nice to just be able to hit that, that button um, and cut the whole machine off and, and blow it out. Um, other than that, they're pretty much identical. Same um, step-up motors, the same gantry, although this one's a little bit smaller. The other one's larger. Um, everything is pretty much the same. You notice I put mine on blocks. The reason I put mine on these blocks is to give me a little bit more height for when I'm laser etching a deeper piece of wood and things like that. That's just my own preference. You can buy these uh, feet, which are like two or three times as, as high, you can buy them from Algo Laser. I'll leave a link in the description for them. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut some 3.6 mil ply. We're gonna make one of these boxes. I'm gonna show you on Lightburn how we're gonna set it up and, um, and that sort of thing. We're not gonna go deep into light burn at the moment, but we're just gonna to touch on it. Um, and I'm gonna show you how to burn the very basic or engrave or cut out the very basic of shapes, which this actually, it is, isn't it? It's very basic. Right. Okay, so as you can see on the screen, we've got our, uh, our box exploded into its components. It's only six parts of this box, which is very easy. Uh, what I did have to do though, is if you look here, if, you, if you're gonna make a box of any sort that locks together like this, you've gotta make sure that um, this measurement here is the right measurement for the ply you're using, because if this is over, if this is a, a wider measurement than the ply you're using, then your ply is going to stick out and it's not going to lock together. And the same if it's too small a measurement there. This is 3.64, which is perfect. If that was like two mil, then you would have the ends of these, these castles, these interlocking pieces hanging out 
So make sure when you, first of all, when you, you come across a design like this that locks together, make sure you get that right. Okay, right, I just thought I'd just <laughs> chuck that in there. <laughs> um, so first of all, we're gonna turn our machine on, make sure it's going home okay. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're just going to now in both kits you get this little doodad and that is the the correct focus depth for your laser and it's really easy all you do is you drop this on your surface of your work like so and then you undo these little switch these little screws finger screws um, and make sure that that slides, I don't know if you can see that on camera, I can zoom in a little bit I think, but yeah, that is the right focus now for the laser. Okay, so don't lose that. In fact, let's have a little look at what that measurement is. I'm hoping I've got a good enough light. Right, so. It's 4.82 mil, I'd say that's 5 mil, isn't it? Well, it's 4.82 mil actually. <laughs> so there you go. That's the right, the right depth between the bottom of your protective perspex cover there and the surface that you're etching. I might actually, I don't know, put a little hole in one of these and stick it in there. Okay, so we've got our depth there. Okay, right. Now what I've done, I've connected a simple pump to this, just a, it's literally an aquarium pump. Um, and what that does is it blows the rubbish out of the way. I am gonna get the proper pump for it, but for now, this is all I've got. So let's turn that on. You shouldn't really hear it much, to be honest. I mean, can you hear that? I can just hear it from where I am. Right, let's get to cutting this out. So, <clears throat> right, home first. Okay, make sure everything's working, nothing's getting trapped. And then we're gonna go to frame, and this is gonna, basically, it's gonna take the laser over there and it's gonna show me where it's gonna cut, um, just so I know that I'm within the right area. There you go, okay. Um, I'll turn my extraction on in just a minute because it's really loud. So that's that. We've got our air assist on. This is pretty self-explanatory as well. So the slower our laser goes, the less passes you're gonna take and the more the the longer it stays in the same motion, if that makes sense. I'm making a right pig's ear of this. The slower it goes, the better it cuts. So we're gonna take that right down to three millimeters per second, okay? Uh, we're doing a line, we're doing maximum uh, power, which is 100% there, okay, that's all good. And then all we need to do is press start. And there we go. Thank you. 
Now this, sometimes you do get this happen. Um, and I've had it happen quite a lot with both machines. And I don't think it's the machine. I think it's the, the quality of the ply that you're using. But see, sometimes you just have to push it through. Um, again there, it's it's no big deal to be honest. It's, I mean, once you've cleaned that little bit up, we're not even going to see it, but the actual cut. So, <gasps> let's turn my glasses off. So the cut itself is really good. I mean, that is literally one pass. I did have the air assist on, but it's not that powerful. Um, you can see on one of them, there's a little bit of scorching, maybe there, just a little bit of scorching, but that pump is just, that fish tan pump is not good enough. We shouldn't have that anyway. Um, so that's one more box done. Now, what I didn't mention is the importance of these. Um, Guys, I can't stress how important as soon as you touch that button, get these on. It doesn't have any effect looking at your monitor or anything like that. I mean, it may be the darker ones, yeah, but you're still, you know, your eyes are really important. You've got to keep these on at all times when you turn the laser on. So, my overall opinion of this particular machine is that it's good, it's compact, it's small. If you're in a maker space where you don't have a lot of room, I mean, the, the, the other one of these, the bigger version is, is literally, it's massive. Um, and if, you've, if you're in a, like a, a cubby hole, and many makers are, many makers have only got a small shed or they've got a back room or, you know, part of a garage amongst all their their life the possessions you know their bikes and their cars so i think it's ideal this size um the laser certainly i mean that that's great i mean you've seen that one pass whereas the five watt would be two or three or sometimes even four passes because that doesn't have air assist either um whereas this one does um but like i say it's identical, just smaller and a larger laser other than this. I would like to see Alga Laser use the other control um, and have an emergency stop button on there and a key, an access key. Um, so yeah, let's have a little look on the internet and see how much these things are. So, so, this is the 10 watt uh, Algo Laser DIY kit mini. That's what we've got here now. Um, I'm not sure what that is in pounds. I'll put it on the screen in a second, but $249, which is not a bad price, is it, to be honest? For what you get, I mean, a completely um, complete machine. I'll leave a link to this uh, actual page. I mean, there's the uh, the pump and the camera mount. I will be fitting a camera to this. I've just went and downloaded the um, the calibration file, and I've got the like, the camera that I'm going to mount on it as well. So that maybe that's another video. Um, the previous one was the this is the DIY kit. This is the larger one. This is the 400 by 400. It's a lot bigger and that's $279. But um, like I said, you can switch out the 5 watt and the 10 watt laser. For me, I think the larger one, this one, would be best suited for me with the 10 watt laser installed. So. What I'll probably do is I will swap this one out and I'll use the uh, the larger um, 
the DIY with the 10 watt. Um, yeah, but my overall opinion of this machine is it's very good, actually, very good. And I would recommend you buying one. And I don't say that, I'm not biased in any way. Algo Laser did send me this for free. Um, but I said to them originally, I will not uh, mask anything. I will, if there's something I don't like, I will actually say. Um, and to be honest, the only thing I don't like is the fact that it hasn't got an emergency stop button and a key. That's it really. What I do like, is the fact that they actually reached out to many of us makers in the community and they sent us the DIY kit and says, can you have a look? Can you give us your feedback? Because it's really important to us. So we all did this um, and they changed quite a lot. They changed some of the instruction manual. The instruction manual seems to be, it seems to be a lot clearer now. I don't know, maybe it's me, but I found it a lot easier to assemble this. And also these main, um, what are they called? The, the side pieces, let's move that out of the way. These, we all struggle because we put it together originally. This is the, the other one. Um, and we got things all mixed up and we said, right, basically you need to work on this. So they did. And they've actually, when this came, it had stickers on saying A, B, C, D. Um, and it was great because you just put them in the right place. So anyway, I'll leave a link to this particular model. I'll also leave a link to the DIY kit. If you want to build one of these and you're not sure, you want more clarity. Um, that is actually a build video where I'll build the whole thing from the box, out of the box, and we build it together. Um, but yeah, check out the other one. So thanks for watching. If you do buy one of these and you get stuck, you can always message me and I'll, I'll try and answer any questions that you have. I mean, if you've got any questions at all, just pop them in the comments. And by the way, there's not many people hitting that subscribe button anymore. And I think people are, um, they're concentrating on, or YouTube are concentrating on the shorts and us YouTubers that, do this a lot we're kind of suffering with views and all that sort of thing now so please hit that subscribe button give me a like give me a comment give me a share and i will really appreciate it anyway thanks for watching and i'll see you next time oh yeah before you go this is the little box we just made it's great isn't it i'll start putting my rings and things in these I've just damaged it, but uh, I thought I'd just clean the edge up and then pull that anyway. Perfect, isn't it? Brilliant. And, um, and what I used for these ones was the chestnut stain inside and out. Just normal chestnut. Lovely, aren't they? Anyway, thanks for watching.